Hello everyone, welcome to Curiosity the Science Show. I'm Felix talking to you from Central University of Punjab, Bhatinda, India. This science show is of the episode number 41 for the month of March 2023. The March, you know, the etymology of the word March. Etymology is all about the, the origin of the word. It gives you profound ideas about how did the meaning came from, you know. Etymology has always been a, f a favorite topic of mine, especially while remembering different kanji characters of the Japanese script, the Chinese scripts too, you know. Uh, yeah, so March comes from Martius, that's a Latin word, uh, because in Roman, uh, you know, the month system, right now we are using Gregorian system, right, all around the, the English system. So in the, in the Roman system, Martius, the third month, uh, used to be the month of Mars, you know, the, the Roman god, right? So the god of wars, so war, you know, because the March used to be the beginning of the season of warfare just after the winter. And that is why the month is called March. Well, March for me is very special. This is a month of equinox, you know, uh, 2023 equinox falls on 21st of March. So to, uh, this equinox is the equal day and night, isn't it? So uh, that is going to be the, you know, the start of spring here in the northern hemisphere or autumn in the southern hemisphere. I have been to Antarctica and it's very interesting. Uh, to, this equinox, March equinox is going to be the first sunset in Antarctica. I've been to Arctic too. So in the Arctic, it is first sunrise, you know, so March till September is going to be complete uh, you know, light in Arctic while complete pitch dark in Antarctic. Okay. So, yeah, so that is the, I'm looking forward to this 21st March in uh, two, three weeks from today. Uh, let's see what moved the world of science and technology and environment and medicine uh, for the last month that is in Feb. So the defining moment or event from the last month of February had been the earthquake. You know, so Feb 6 earthquake that happened in Turkey and Syria with over 51,000 casualties. It, it is the deadliest earthquake in this region, uh, the Syria and Turkey, for the last 500 years, friends. Uh, the magnitude of this earthquake is 7.8, which is really tremendous. By the way, it's a new learning for me too. I thought this these magnitudes are expressed in Richter scale. No, that is now gone. Richter scale used to be the, mag, you know, the, the scale. Nowadays, moment magnif magnitude scale introduced by a Japanese scientist uh, in the early 1970s. This is now the current standard. The moment magnitude scale is all about excite the power that the earthquake is generating the, the Newton's kilojoules, you know. So it's an SI unit, moment uh, magnitude scale. So 7.8 followed by 7.7 .7, uh, MW, that is the aftershock. So it has been really deadly. So by the way, just like Richter scale, this moment magnitude scale is also logarithmic. So that means that number six magnitude, five and six, the difference, let's say it is 10 times more powerful, while six and seven is 100 times, that is multiplied by 10 more powerful then seven and eight it is thousand times more powerful you know it's the order of magnitude of 10 it's logarithmic it's exponential that is why it is really really dangerous also last month we saw the chinese balloon incident uh, you know and in antarctica also we i was part of many of these balloon weather balloon launching you know and also dobson spectroscope for measuring the ozone uh, intensity of the upper stratosphere you know so the, the, the China claims it to be the weather balloon, but uh, US and Canada say it is surveillance because it has got lots of interesting machines uh, to, to see what is going on in the ground, including the uh, telecommunications, you know, so that's pretty interesting. By the way, these balloons, uh, especially this uh, the one which we uh, recently found in, uh, you know, in the, it flew the entire continental United States. So this balloon flies at approximately 18,000 meters. So can flight fly at this high a latitude, uh, altitude? Yes, uh, only one flight in the history of the uh, you know, aircraft uh, 
industry, you know, that is Concorde once flight between Paris and New York. So it only that Concorde, the supersonic jet can fly at 18,000 meters altitude. And of course, the uh, other than commercial, of course, the, the fighter jets often travel, the F-1 fighter, you know, the US fighter jets often travel up to 22,000 um, meters right usually the uh, the fly the commercial flights the maximum is 14000 meters while usually it travels around 12000 meters that is 12 kilometer this is 18 kilometers you know it's really at a high altitude now coming to the papers published in the last month the, the major papers i'm really excited about this discovery it's a simple urine test that can detect prostate cancer as well as pancreatic cancer that's fantastic you know so this is a near perfect accuracy uh, of this uh, the test just a urine test to to see pancreatic cancer by the way pancreatic cancer has got lowest survival period you know so after detection the five year survival period is less than 10 percentage usually one or two percentage so if you are detected with pancreatic cancer with in the next five years there is a very high chance that you are dead you know unfortunately the, therefore the key of uh, fighting these cancer especially pancreatic and liver cancer uh, you know is early detection so if a simple urine test can detect and this is home uh, you know home test that's amazing isn't it uh, then many lives can be saved so by the way this test works by utilizing something called Raman scattering spectroscopy. So there is a handheld sensor, Raman discovered by our own CV Raman. And apparently today, the, the day I'm recording this curiosity, today is the day that he discovered this Raman effect. And that's why today is celebrated as National Science Day in India. And also today is the birthday of our university, the Foundation Day, Central University of Punjab in Patinda. So this particular sensor has got this Raman scattering sensor based on a very interesting nano uh, technological structure. They, they call it as three-dimensional plasmonic coral nano architecture, 3D PCN. Again, that resembles the structure of coral reef, you know. So that is also uh, uh, an example of biomimetics, nature-inspired design. So by the way, all these papers, please check the show notes for the link to the blog where you can, with one click, you can actually take you to the original paper. Please read it. Okay, so that is why I choose this as the cover image of this month's story over at Medium. Second story is that University of Adelaide researchers, that is in Australia, they have split the natural seawater into the oxygen and hydrogen with nearly 100 percentage efficiency. That is, you know, the, the technique is to produce the green hydrogen by the electrolysis. That is amazing. Till date, you need to desalinate the water, that is to remove the salt from the seawater before you can separate into hydrogen oxygen. But this one, you really don't need that. You know, that is amazing, you know. And again, that is using non-porous cheap catalyst in a commercial electrolyzer. So the, the catalyst which they used is cobalt oxide with chromium oxide on its surface. So it is quite cheap. That is what the authors claim. Very interesting. I'm looking forward for the further scaling up of this, uh, you know, this finding. Third story is coming from the humanities. Bans on the prostitution led to significant increase in rape rates while liberalization of the prostitution leads to significant decrease in rape rates. That's very interesting. Although the, da the data is coming from Europe, uh, you know, it could be applicable everywhere too. Most of the European countries, especially the, the Netherlands, you might know it is prostitution is legal. And of course, the Netherlands have one of the lowest rape incidences in the Europe. So it's very intriguing. Is there any connection between these two? Fourth story is about video game. So video game playing causes no harm to the young children's cognitive abilities, regardless of the duration of the game playing as well as video game genre. You know, so that's very interesting. Last time also we featured this video game thing, right? Especially with the genre, like the shooting genre doesn't increase the homicidal rates. You know, this is just vice versa, right? Pretty interesting. 
Fifth story is that extremely rich people are not extremely smart. Very interesting. So there is a there is a, a sweet spot which is approximately 90, 90th percentile rich. So beyond 90th percentile richness. So you no know, 91st or 92nd like that. Uh, you know this after that 90th percentile uh, as rich as you get the smartness level decreases that is very very inter interesting intelligent iq isn't it so above that level the differences in income are not related to the cognitive ability so it is just random sampling and top one percentage of the super super rich people even score slightly worse on the cognitive ability very interesting isn't it and six stories again on the richness it's about the greedy people they have more money but they are less satisfied with their lives according to the new study quite expected isn't it satisfaction you know because you you are greedy nothing is satisfying with your life you want more and more like schopenheimer right that the famous philosopher right it's all about desire right so unless we stop the desire we can never be rich in our real life Seven stories that a study of nearly 200,000 ex felons in the Florida found that ones who resettled in communities with large number of immigrant workers had 21 percentage lower rates of recidivism. You know, so recidivism is tendency to recommit these uh, crimes. So it's very interesting. Immigrant communities have a lot of job opportunities for uh the the ex felons you know so they don't really mind who is working they are not that very particular about the idea identity or the history so that is why they feel much more easy to integrate back into the community you know that's pretty interesting this the roles that immigrant communities play uh you know to uh, reduce the recidivism as well as to integrate this uh, ex criminals back into the the community pretty interesting isn't it I really like this paper. Next study is that education to fight the misinformation, the, the best, uh, you know, the, the bullet, the silver bullet to fight the misinformation is education as per this study. So education levels impact on the belief in the scientific misinformation and mistrust of COVID-19 preventive measures. So people with university degree were less likely to believe in COVID-19 fake news you know and uh, all this propaganda and more likely to trust preventive measures than those without a degree very interesting next story humans may need more sleep in winter very interesting isn't it so during the winter months we might actually need to increase the sleep while in summer month we don't need that much a long sleep just like uh, other animals in the animal kingdom do you know so winter sleep, especially like the polar bear and all, they sleep a lot during the winter months in polar winter, you know, it's pitch dark, right? Hibernation, isn't it? So research shows that the people get more deep REM sleep, the REM sleep, that is rapid eye movement of the sleep cycle is the really deepest. So your body is completely relaxed, you know, something like a coma, while your brain is pretty active. Maybe the dreams happen during the REM sleep, right? So we we get more REM sleep in winter than summer. So it's all about the you know the chrono uh, chronobiology, isn't it? We all have biological clock built inside our system. Trust it. Next story is the air filter installations in the school can boost the educational performance of the students, measured by the test score. Very interesting, isn't it? By reducing their exposure to pollution, especially lead, you know, and a particulate matter. Right? So, installing air filter in the classroom, especially in countries where air quality is extremely poor, especially in China and here in India, you know, we may consider installing air filters. Next story is that the first observational evidence linking black holes to dark energy, you know, uh, that is pretty interesting because uh, we know that the dark energy is out of entire energy in the universe 65 percentage is dark energy and we have no clue about it how it works dark energy is cousin or sibling is dark matter and 85 percentage of the entire mass on the universe is dark mat matter while 65 percent is dark energy so dark energy and 
black hole are they kind of related you know yes so as per this new uh, you know study which combined the vacuum energy of the black hole produced in the death of the universe first stars which corresponds to the measured quantity of the dark energy in our universe it's a mathematical paper it's really complicated but i just read the the summary of the paper please check the show notes it's pretty interesting i think this is going to be a paradigm shift paper okay can even get a nobel prize who knows right next story is about the vitamin d vitamin d supplements has been linked to reduce risk of suicide study of veteran finds the war veterans actually those who served in vietnam wars and all right so if you supplement these high risk groups of suicide by the way veteran is one of the high risk group in the us for the suicide just by supplementing with vitamin d can substantially reduce the suicidal tendency fantastic isn't it this very very interesting story and final story from the last month is the physically demanding work tied to higher male fertility you know so male fertility increases as you do some physically demanding work especially the work that let you lift heavy weights you know so research found that the men who reported often lifting or moving heavy objects at work had 46% higher sperm concentration and 44% higher total sperm count compared to those with less physical job like office job like me you know university teacher so if you are like me uh, an office worker the blue collar worker consider weight lifting and also cardio so that can increase uh, you know uh, your of course it can increase your longevity as well as well as if you are if you are uh, planning to be a, a, a father soon then you may you may do this also to increase the chances as well as to increase the uh, you know increase the baby's uh, you know the the health health level isn't it and by the way we do have a facebook group please do subscribe the link is in the show notes now coming next part of the curiosity is about the observances of the next month march 2023 right so first march is jupiter venus conjunction they became very close jupiter and venus and uh, first is also a sea grass uh, you know un world sea grass day you know the sea grass uh uh you know recently the last last year only we we saw that the seagrass consists of the largest plant ever discovered on the planet earth a community of clonal seagrass you know so seagrass do play a, a huge role in the coastal ecosystem march 3 is world wildlife day 7th is worm moon so by the way march full moon is called worm moon as per the almanac practiced by the tribes people in the us you know indigenous americans 20th march is world happiness day by the un 22nd is world water day you know uh, just before 22nd is 21st the most important day which i already said 21st is like you know equinox march equinox right it's used to be called spring equinox in northern hemisphere but there is a bias northern hemisphere bias cognitive bias because it's not really a spring equinox if you are living anywhere in the southern hemisphere like in australia or new zealand or south africa or south america you know for them it is autumnal equinox so it's much more appropriate to call it as march equinox you and celebrate this event as nowruz day because in in persia and iran this is a traditional day for them this equinox day here in india as well you know so it used to be a very very important day as for the sanskrit tradition right but unfortunately we are no longer celebrating this this event these days okay so uh, yeah so dakshinayana and uttarayana right so these days the the hindu calendar there is a slight differences from uh, the equinox day but again if you look in the history this uttarayana and dakshinayana used to be exactly as of the equinox okay and also the 21st march is world forest day as well as world poetry day 
you know i'm a subscriber of this poetry foundation poem of the day email please consider subscribing to very interesting poem you know every day they will send you one poem and i i found this poem is also pretty uh, you know uh, related to that day of the year right very interesting i'm looking forward to reading a poem about the march equinox on the equinox day poetry foundation if you're listening please consider you know putting a poem about the navrus okay and 24th is moon venus conjunction and also the same day is the tuberculosis day 28th is moon mars conjunction and 30th is zero waste day now coming next session of the curiosities of opportunities for the students dbt welcome trust team science grant the call is open now this is till 21st april it's a huge grant 10 crore uh, you know uh, the, but that is only for the biomedical if you are working with biomedical field especially infectious diseases neglected here in india you are welcome to apply for it you know dst india eu join call is open now 29th march is uh, you know the, the closing date australia india strategic research fund for collaboration of the research projects around 15 is open now 15th march is the deadline indo argentine joint call is open 30th april is the deadline call for project proposal under strengthening upscaling nurturing innovations for the livelihood that is sunil program is also open now okay and uh, coming to the scholarship program of the ministry of education for foreign scholarship scheme right uh, all these are from the ministry of education side slovenian phd scholarship turkish phd scholarship and british council scholarship all these are open now please check out the show notes for the link that's it for this month and by the way my book is still on sale uh, the life skills please uh, consider having a look at this uh, you know the book uh, you can order in the link below in the show notes you also have a facebook page which i told you the the young academy for uh, check out for the most more exciting curiosity driven research as it happened every day my uh, volunteer our volunteers do post it there Okay. And I hope all of you will have a very productive uh, March, the month of Equinox. Thank you for watching. I will see you soon in yet another Curiosity episode for the month of April. Till then, goodbye.